everyone and welcome to a new video. Today's video is not going to be particularly educational, but hopefully it will still be entertaining. I did have a tutorial that was supposed to go up today, but I didn't get it finished on time and I thought this might be a fun alternative. Today I'm going to take you through my inactive work in progress bins, which is basically a code word for abandoned projects that I never finished and I'm probably going to get rid of. You see, in my sewing room I have four bins. I shall get one for you, that look like this and store projects that I'm currently working on. And I usually have one or two projects in each bin. But beyond these, I have some bins where works in progress that I'm not progressing on go to live and eventually die. I've got like four scrapbooking bins, two large bins, and one of these that are all filled with these projects that I really need to reevaluate and decide whether I'm ever going to finish them or not. And if the answer is no, then I need to get rid of them. So I thought we could go through these bins together. I haven't looked into some of them in probably a year's time. So I'm not entirely sure what projects we're going to come across, but I will talk you through the reasons about why I stopped working on them, um, why I'm not interested in restarting them, or if I am interested in restarting them, and if there's something you're going to see progress on in the future. So hopefully this will be entertaining and a little peek into some of the projects that I've worked on over the past couple of years, um, but maybe haven't finished over the past couple of years. So let's go! I decided to start with two scrapbooking bins, which usually live in the linen closet outside my sewing room. So these are up high, they're difficult to access, and they're probably the bins that I haven't gone through in the longest, so we shall see what we find in here. On top we have the beginnings of a hat. This is actually supposed to be for an Edwardian project based on a piece from Harper's Bazaar. So there's this beautiful suit and it was paired with an adorable little take on a tricorn. So I wanted to make that out of a brown and pink striped suiting which I purchased in Pennsylvania. But that suiting is very poor quality and I realized pretty quickly that it wasn't going to do the design justice. So I never got around to drafting the actual dress but I did get started on the hat. So it might be time for this to go but I do like the shape of it. I remember working pretty hard on this. Alright, so on top here I have a pattern. Okay, so this is for a 16th century costume. And I recall redrafting this for something similar quite recently. So I don't think I need to keep this. This pattern is all for an Edwardian shirtwaist they didn't end up making because it fit quite poorly. So I think all of that can do. Yeah, it was a very weird design. I think for this one I had like 13 photos that I was inspired by and I was trying to combine them all into a single garment and it was just not happening. Here's the sleeve pattern. So down here you can see the beginnings of it. Like I think it has the potential to be quite pretty. I really like the materials that I used for it. So I might hold on to this but I don't think I need the pattern. This could be a fun thing to try and revive. I'll keep the raw materials together but I don't see myself using the original pattern for that. And I have Ikea curtain ties in here. Like I don't need that. <laughs> This is what the 15th century pattern was for. So this was a lady's vest that I wanted to make. So it's going to be really hard to show you. But that's what the front looked like. See, it's black so it doesn't show up. But I used different materials in a zigzag pattern across the chest. But I recall this not fitting me very well at all. But that didn't stop me from attempting to beat it. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to keep this one. I've actually started on a project from a similar period using a lot of the same fabrics and I'm much happier with how that's going so this is going to go. Bye! In here I have, oh my gosh this is old, this is a wedding dress bodice that I made and the reason it looks so weird is because it was modeled around these pieces of lace which are just stunning so I wanted them to go like this across the chest and then I designed a lining that would perfectly fit that and would also have a corset. So I've had this around for ages but I'm honestly still going to keep it because I still really like the idea. I'm going to clean these bins out and put everything back later on but that's one bin done. So this was supposed to be the front of the Victorian skirt like so but the suiting that I chose to do that with is just all wrong and then it's backed <laughs> with this jacquard fabric and then I was going to put ribbon where the pencil markings are. I'm pretty sure I started this as a way to procrastinate something else and I did not give it the time it deserved to turn it into something nice. I also have the base for the vest that I showed you guys. That's actually not a bad base. I might keep the base but get rid of the top layer because I could use this as the foundation for something else. So that can stay. This is all for a project that I worked quite hard on. It's this beaded velvet jacket that was meant to go with a plain black velvet skirt. 
and I did all of this sequin work on the back of it, but it ended up not fitting me properly in the waist. Like it's too high waisted at the back. So I wasn't happy enough with it to finish it, but I worked so friggin' hard on this. So I'm wondering if maybe I could add an extension to the shoulder, which will cause it to sit farther down on my waist. This is staying. Here are the sleeves for that project too. And the way I did this is I traced the design onto interfacing, which was then fused on, and I used contrasting thread and basting stitches to transfer it to the right side of the fabric, and then I added the sequins on top. And I was planning on pairing that with this chiffon and using this for a blouse, but I don't know what that's going to happen, so I'm going to put in this in with my other chiffon. I have patterns in here. What is it a pattern for? I'm going to get rid of the pattern for that jacket because it doesn't fit me very well, so I don't need it. And I'm going to get rid of whatever this mystery pattern is that was also in here. I do keep most of my patterns. They're in folders and they're all nicely organized but I don't feel like I need to keep all of these. And this is a pattern for a large circle skirt, which I actually might keep. These can all go though, they were for the spur of the moment Victorian costume, which I got rid of the suiting that I used for the front. This was for a mermaid costume that I wanted to make out of some really pretty brocades and organzas that I purchased at Joann's. I found some matching shells to go with them at Michael's and I thought I could do a mermaid inspired evening gown that would just be beautiful. Uh, so I designed a mermaid fit skirt with a really jagged bottom edge so it would look almost like a tail and I purchased netting for it and it was going to be so cool but I recently came across the project and it was not that cool. I really don't like the fabrics that I originally picked for it and though I still like the idea and the shape of the skirt I ended up getting rid of most of my progress just because I didn't envision myself coming back to that. But I do still have the lining of the skirt, uh, so I could always build off of this in the future and potentially restart that project. I have kept all of the shells and things for it, just not the materials that I originally purchased, since I don't think they were the right materials for that piece. <laughs> this is going to be our next victim. These bins are from Ikea, and look at this lovely illustration they have on them don't use for baby storage. All right, so on top here, I have more of that wool, which I cut into circular shapes to create a flared edge to the part that I showed you earlier. But this fabric does not have the texture required to support that. So it didn't work, it looked terrible. And then I just kept the pieces. And I'm so mad at myself for even attempting this without really considering the weight of the fabric because I wasted so much of this material that I could have used for a nice Edwardian suit. Then I have a mock-up. Okay, I can get rid of this. This was for the suit that the hat goes with. So I actually worked pretty hard on this, but this is before I knew how to properly sew lapels. So I'm gonna end up having to redraft that anyway. So that can just, it can just go. I purchased all the materials for this and came up with this idea when I was in a real sewing rut a couple years ago. I just wanted to make something fun and easy, but I decided to make something really complicated instead. So this is a heavily beaded, like look at all of that around the neckline. You know it's old because it is lined with hooping steel instead of normal boning. Uh, this steel has since been discontinued. But anyway, so it's got a bone base and I hand sewed all of this embroidery stitching around the bottom to give it texture and cause it to sink in. And it was supposed to be some sort of renaissance thing. I feel like I might keep this just so I can do a challenge with it or something. I feel like it'd be cool to try and turn these into what they were intended to be turned into in the first place. You might remember if you've been following my channel for a while. So this is the top of a Tudor kirtle and then it is boomed inside. And I actually made a video tutorial all about this. See, I don't want to get rid of this. And it's black velvet, so I technically still have the things that will match it. And it should still fit me. I guess I'm gonna keep this. It doesn't take up very much room. These are ruffles that I made for an 18th century costume, and these are made out of Ikea curtains. And I pinked the edge and then I used fray check to secure it, and this was supposed to be gathered down to go on the bottom of the skirt, and I actually hand stitched the top hem. And I did film doing this, I don't think I have the clips anymore because that was a computer ago and I got rid of a lot of files. I think you'll be seeing the top portion of that later in this video. <laughs> so then in here we have the reason why I abandoned this project. So the bodice was actually coming along pretty well, but then the skirt was just a disaster. And as I said, I was working on this when I was in a little bit of a rut and I just, I didn't want to work that hard. Like I was willing to do the beading, but I didn't want to work through this. Do you see all that puckering? I tried sewing these velvet bands onto the skirt about 
eight times. Like, I kid you not. I ripped these off, I sewed them back on, I tried using seams, I tried using top stitching, I kept changing my needle, I tried doing it by hand, and no matter what I tried, it puckered like this. These materials just do not want to be together. And this was the only real vision I had for the skirt. Without these, the skirt was going to be really boring compared to the bodice, and I didn't have enough fabric to make the skirt long enough without using the velvet, and I just kind of broke down, decided it wasn't worth it. <laughs> Also, I realized I never really told you why I abandoned this. I think I just lost interest. Um, I wanted to work on something a little bit more sparkly, and I ended up using the velvet for something else, though now I can't remember what that something else was. Regardless, I just sort of lost interest and set it aside for later, and so far later has not come. Then there's this bag. So these pieces are all for a 1980s... 1980s. These pieces are all for an 1890s project and it was supposed to be a short dress based off of 1890s evening gowns. So these were the sleeves. I don't know if you can tell but the base is a glittery pink satin with netting over top that was hand stitched on. They have a delightful amount of poof. But once I started working on this, since I only purchased enough of the satin to make a short dress, I realized it was going to look like an 1980s prom dress with these huge sleeves and this gathered bodice and I was just not liking how it was turning out. So I decided to scrap it but I saved all the pieces in case I could come up with a better idea someday. And I feel like I finally have. I think the way to save this is to keep the sleeves as they are and to use the glittery fabric for an undersection of the skirt and then make the main portion of the skirt and the bodice out of black fabric. And that would class it up a little bit and still let me use these. I'm definitely going to draft a new bodice for it. I didn't know very much about drafting at that point. These are all gonna go. So in here we have what was the beginnings of a bustle dress. And this was going to be the petticoat, and then I was going to drape red cotton sateen over top. I got the skirt completely finished, and I really liked the shape of it, but the cotton sateen I had didn't really match. But I pushed through and made a bodice out of it anyway, but the bodice didn't fit properly. It had problems with the shoulder that was then made worse by the way I drafted the collar, and it just, it looked bad. And then I realized that the cotton sateen that I thought I had two cuts of, so I had one cut I was using for the bodice, and then another cut that I was going to use for the skirt, were actually different colors, and neither of them really matched the red in this. So I ended up scrapping the top and using the cotton sateen for mock-up material. So I'm going to rip this apart and keep the fabric, and hopefully I can find something else to use it for someday. It actually matches this really nicely. Maybe I could use those together. That would be kind of funny if that's what ended up happening. Alright, that's another box done! So here's one of the bins that I usually use for active works in progress, but I have more inactive works in progress right now, and as you can probably tell, my usual bins for those things were filled, so I ended up filling up one of these as well. So I thought I'd just take you through it quickly. Up on top here, we have the beginnings of a 17th century costume, and I really love the pattern I drafted for this, and I really love the fabric, and it was supposed to fit like this, but I could not get this bottom point turned out properly, and I tried several times, and it was just not happening. So I think I really need to remake this with an entirely different construction method, and at this point I've trimmed away the edges quite significantly, so I don't think the base is salvageable. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to take out the boning and keep the boning, but scrap the actual fabric portion of this. And then in this box, I have more things to do with that project. So I'm going to go through this, keep the pattern, put the pattern in an envelope, and get rid of everything else because I don't need it. And at the bottom here, um, I'm not going to go through this because this is all stuff to do with my beetle wing costume. So I will link the tutorial for that down below. I went through the embroidery process and I have this project probably 80% of the way done and I still really like it. I just stopped working on it because the seasons changed and I kind of lost interest in working on this very light summery dress in the middle of winter. So this is something I plan on revisiting this year when I have more time, it's just not something that I'm actively working on. So these are the scrapbook bins that live above my closet. They're supposed to be overflow storage for works in progress that are like actually in progress, but it's kind of become storage for things that I've abandoned. So on top here I have a striped summer 1950s inspired dress that I started last year and I actually filmed the process of making this though I think I've since gotten rid of the footage because I really wasn't happy with how the top was fitting me. I did make a mock-up for it, it just fit very differently than it did when I actually made it from this fabric and had the weight of the skirt weighing down the waistline. So I ended up being pretty unhappy with this dress, it just didn't inspire me and I wasn't excited to finish it even though all I really had left to do was add a zipper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the bodice and I'm going to hold on to the skirt and then maybe later this year I can try this pattern again or try my own design out of this fabric because it is really cute. 
It is a cotton shirting that I got from Diana's Fabric in New York City. And the colors remind me of watermelon. Next up, I have this. And I so wish I could tell you this was finished. Because I spent so much time on this. So this was supposed to be a riding costume based on an example from the Met Museum. And I love the details of this example and I was so eager to recreate it that I kind of jumped in before finalizing the pattern. And I had so many problems with this. It just seemed like no matter how much time I put into this, I couldn't get it up to my standards. And I'm still not happy with it. You know, I was going to get rid of this, but I just tried it on. It's actually pretty great. So I originally stopped working on this just because I came, became so frustrated with trying to fix problems that didn't seem to be there the day I was working on it before. Like it just seemed like everything went wrong with this. But now looking at it for the first time in like a year, I think it's pretty cool. Like it's not perfect, but it's pretty neat. So I might try this on with the skirt I made for it and see what I think and see if it's worth completing. All that's really left, if I recall correctly, is rehemming the skirt, um, making a hat to go with it, and doing the collar. So maybe I will try and revisit that later this year and I'll hold on to this for now. Another bin done. I think that project is a really classic example of me abandoning things. Sometimes I abandon things in pretty early stages, but more often than not, I get something about 80% done and then just lose interest. And it's not even really losing interest, it's just becoming aware of all the problems that aren't being fixed as I progress on it. I feel like around the 80% mark, that's when I should be happy with something and be excited to put the finishing details on. And with this one, I was at the point where I was just frustrated and it wasn't looking the way I wanted. And all of the mistakes that I made earlier in the project were just kind of catching up with me and making me even more frustrated. So at that point, that's when I end up quitting a lot of projects, even though they're really close to being done and the bulk of the work has been made. They just aren't something I'm happy enough with to finish. So that's kind of a shame, but fortunately that happens to me quite a lot. Now in this bin, this is another scrapbook bin, it looks like this. I have some pieces that you may remember. Like this, um, I did a tutorial for this, or I did a video about making it at least. But the problem was I didn't pre-wash any of my materials. So I suspect that when I wash this, it's going to be too tight for me to even get into. And I'm actually not even sure if this gingham fabric is washable. I made this at a point where I wasn't really interested in wearing vintage inspired things. I just liked making them for fun and you guys seem to like seeing them. So that's why I made this piece, but realistically this isn't something I'm going to add into my wardrobe or even like think I can wash. And it was originally supposed to have a skirt made out of this purple fabric, but this fabric does not have enough body to make a skirt for a 1950s project. And I don't think I even have enough of this fabric to make the type of skirt I would want to pair something like this with. So I'm just going to get rid of this project, but I do have the pattern somewhere and I would reattempt it in the future with some pre-washed materials. And here I have the bottom portion of the jacket that I just showed you. So this is just very, very simple and it has some detail work down the sides where it opens. I think I have to rehem this. I think I also have to potentially remake or at least severely reevaluate the bodice because I ended up doing some really quick fixes on this to get it to fit me in the waist. And look at how sloppy that is. I think you will probably have seen this beautiful handiwork if you watched a vlog I made a year back which featured this project. So I need to try this on. I need to reevaluate this and how to finish it. But now that I've tried on the jacket, I do want to get this project done. And then I have this, which was supposed to go with those ruffles that I showed you earlier. And this was based off of, I can't remember if I drafted the pattern for this or if this was based on Nora Wah pattern. I'd like to try this on and see if it still fits me. I do have enough fabric to complete it if I like how it fits me. Um, so yeah, that one is going to stay around, but I don't have intentions or plans to work on it anytime soon. And the reason I never finished that is simply because I decided to make it on a whim. I didn't really think through the construction process, and by the time I had gotten this far in it, I was just burnt out and sick of the idea. I know for me, I have two ways of working. I either think of a project and I make it the next day, and I finish it within a week of coming up with the idea, or I plan something out pretty far in advance, purchase all the materials for it, do sketches, collect references, etc. And when I work in that manner, I can usually keep my enthusiasm for a project up for several months uh, since I have a vision of the outcome so clear in my head that I really want to invest the time in working towards that. Whereas if I think of something and I decide to make it on a whim, I need to finish that project quickly. Because if I do not finish it quickly, then I will lose interest because I haven't invested enough thought and time into it to care about finishing it. 
uh, and then I end up with a whole bunch of wasted fabric and it just it's not a good way of working for me. <laughs> but sometimes my whim projects turn out really well. I made a Rapunzel inspired dress last year that was one of those. I made a cotton 18th century dress like that. I made a Downton Abbey inspired ensemble. So I definitely can work that way and can create nice garments from working that way but sometimes it backfires on me. I'd say about half the time it backfires on me. And then we end up with boxes of unfinished projects like this. <laughs> And on that note, let's go through this box. This is the last one, and this is also the box with the most recent things. So this box usually lives under the table that this is currently resting on, so it's actually pretty easy to access it and to add to it, so I'm probably going to be familiar with most of the things in here. On top, I just have the hoop and the skirt for the beetle wing project, which, as I said, I am still interested in finishing and still have every intention of finishing. Here, you can see a little bit of the handiwork that has been done on that. And I would have that in the bin with the rest of the materials for it. It's just too big to fit in there. Oh boy. So under here, I have a striped 1880s project that I began on. And this is going to be disassembled. Um, I really like the idea for this dress. I do not like the way I constructed it. The bodice did not fit me very well. For the amount of time I need to invest in finishing this, it is not worth completing it with a bodice that is this ill-fitting. So I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to keep the fabric because I only bought eight yards of this and it's very narrow. Uh, so I'm not sure if I will have enough for a bustle dress if I completely get rid of the material used for this bodice, but I'm not moving forward with this design. So that is getting torn apart. I am, however, going to keep the front section for it because I think this is really pretty. I used a very cheap but interestingly textured chiffon-like material for it, and then I have these cute little buttons, and I used some lace on it that I got from my grandmother. So I like that, and I like how that looks with the fabric, but the bodice itself needs to go. These are all the materials for an 1820s costume, which is sort of bridging the gap between Regency fashion and Victorian fashion. So it has a slimmer silhouette that you'd see in the Regency period and the slightly higher waist, but some of the truly tacky, ridiculous details that I love so much from the 20s and 30s. I got pretty far on this project. We'll probably come across the bodice in here somewhere, but I picked the wrong fabric for it and I did not do enough testing with my mock-up, so I was not very happy with the shape of the collar, and the collar is kind of the main point of the piece. I think when I started on this, I wasn't interested in doing a lot of drafting. I wanted to get right into the sewing and right into the beading, and because of that, I overlooked a lot of faults with the bodice. So I'm going to keep the materials for this, but I'm going to get rid of the pattern and start over. I actually started making this out of a silk shanting. So it really needs to be made out of a less crisp, slightly thicker fabric, like a silk satin. And I actually recently acquired an ivory silk satin. So I think that's what I'm going to use for this dress, and I'm going to completely restart over. <laughs> These are all sketches for the bustle dress that I'm going to get rid of. Don't need any of that. The pattern sucked. These, I guess, will go in scraps. This I'm going to put somewhere else. This is also going to go somewhere else. It is just some lace that I used on another 1880s project, which is taking up the bottom of this bin. I was also being used for it and can go back with my other fabrics. Here's some flannel that can go in the basement. I don't need that up here. Here are all the bits and pieces for a beige 1880s dress. I apparently have a big problem with starting 1880s dresses and not finishing them. I would like to finish this dress. It's very close to completion. I really just need to take it out and decide that I'm going to spend a week working on it. But right now, I have so many other things to do that if I have a week to spend sewing, I'm going to start on something that is new and exciting to me instead of finishing something old and not up to my current standards. But I'm going to hold on to the extra pieces for this and I am going to try and get that finished. And here I have a whole bunch of scraps from a blue court gown that I made and I still need to photograph. I don't think I've ever taken worn photos of that piece, which is ridiculous. But I have all of the extra bits from it, which I'm going to put somewhere else. I do have my attempt at making the shoes in here, which I might hold on to for a little while longer. I said in my vlog video about these that I'd thrown them out, and I did throw them out. But then I went through my trash and fished them out because I was kind of hopeful that I could save them. A lot of you suggested putting elastic in the backs of them for them to form to my feet better, but that did not work. However, I still haven't completely given up on these, as you can tell by the fact that I still have them here. This was for the riding costume, but it needs to go elsewhere. This can go in with normal trims too. I have yarn, which I was using for the Regency piece, and these were the sleeves that I made for it, but I don't think they're big enough. They're definitely not big enough. So I'm just gonna get rid of these. And here I have the makings of a hat. I'm gonna put these in my interfacing scrap bucket instead. This is all extra fabric for the riding coat that I showed you earlier. And then these are all materials for an 1880s project. Sorry, I just realized you can't see. That's what it looks like. 
So I have some pink velvet in there, some green cotton, as well as the pattern for this piece. And then at the bottom here I have some cording that belongs elsewhere. I have some strips of taffeta, which I'm going to get rid of. Not taffeta, that's velvet. That I don't think I need. This is the mock-up that the sleeves I just got rid of. This is the taffeta I was going to use for that project. Where's the actual bodice? I'm kind of tempted to go on a hunt and see if I can find a bodice. Oh, these were um, sleeve options for my most recent pattern with McCall's that I didn't end up going with, so I can get rid of that. This is for the 1820s coat. These are the collar ideas that I made, which I think I'm going to scrap. This was the pattern for the front of the beige 1880 skirt, which I don't think I need. And these are the patterns for the 1920s riding habit, which I will relocate elsewhere. I just looked at my closet. Here is the Regency bodice, or not Regency, kind of Regency uh, bodice that I was talking about. So I put a lot of time into this. I don't know if you can see the detail on the front. That is cord covered with pink taffeta to create lacing with a bit of puffed effect. And then the center portion is heavily beaded. The top section is created out of mesh, which I used bias cut strips of shanting to cover. They were all hand stitched into position. That was a huge pain to do. And then the tabs, which are quite ugly looking, were all covered by hand. And it was a lot of effort into this, but it's going to be a lot more effort to finish it. And I'm not going to be able to finish this up to my standards. And it's not worth wasting more time and material on this. So I'm going to reattempt this someday, but I'm not going to keep this bodice. Once again, I kind of forgot to tell you why I stopped working on things. So, for the beige 1880s project, I stopped working on it because there were other things I wanted to finish before the new year, and this took up a lot of space in my sewing room and a lot of space in my dress form, so I put it away for convenience sake, and then I just never got back to it. These scraps for the Edwardian hat. I remember filming this, so I was going to do an Edwardian hat tutorial out of this, but I've actually filmed a new Edwardian hat tutorial, which is going to be the next video on this channel. So I don't need this one, and I've erased the footage of me making it, so it is not helpful for me to keep it. And then the green 1880s costume, I don't think you've even seen unless you keep up with my Instagram stories. I really love this piece, but I wasn't super happy with the weight of the skirt and how that was coming along. Uh, I also didn't get around to drafting the bodice, and I wasn't super excited to draft the bodice. It was also another project where the colors really worked well with spring, uh, and I was working on it kind of towards the beginning of fall. So once the leaves started changing and falling, um, I just lost the motivation to work on it. So it's kind of a contributing bunch of factors. I've made such a mess. Uh, but I'm going to take a while and I'm going to reorganize these and then I will show you the finished product. And hopefully I will be able to fit everything into a single one of these bins and maybe some of the scrapbooking bins. But we will have to see. I managed to consolidate my abandoned works in progress into one of these bins and one of these bins. I've also decided that the black riding costume can cohabitate with the beetle wing project since there was some extra room in this bin. These are all the materials that need to find new homes elsewhere in my sewing room. This is all of the trash. This is all of the recycling. And then I do have some boxes with boning and beads and patterns and other things that I'm going to distribute around my sewing room and put into the rightful places. I'm really happy with how this went. I realize it's very wasteful to start this many projects and to not end up finishing them. It's something that I've definitely gotten better at over time. None of these projects were from 2018. Most of them were from mid-2017, if not earlier. Uh, I have projects from 2016 and even 2015 that were shown in this video. So these are bins that have very much filled up over time. And my habits of finishing things have gotten much better over the years. But it was really nice going through these and clearing them out. Um, I feel quite relieved to be getting rid of some of those projects. And also, it's really nice to go through and realize there are projects that I abandoned that maybe I shouldn't have, that maybe I can finish and turn to something really great. As well as projects that didn't turn out particularly well, but I would still like to reattempt in the future. It's nice to remind myself of those pieces and it kind of inspires me moving forward. So I'm really glad I did this. I'm glad I have some free bins now that I will probably fill with fabric or just costumes so I can reclaim a tiny bit of hanging space in my closet. Whatever I end up doing with it, it's nice to have that space available. So I hope this video was interesting. I realize it probably didn't appeal to everyone, but it was fun for me to film, and I know 
I am nosy. I like seeing what people are up to. I like seeing what people have finished. And I also like seeing what they didn't finish and what the reasons for abandoning something were. If you have a box of abandoned projects or a project you recently decided not to finish, I would love to hear about it in the comment section and I will try to respond to some of them. I also want to give a shout out and thank you to my $36 patrons. I do not have them memorized yet, so I'm going to have to look at my computer. But I want to give a huge thank you to Jordan, Heidi, Jennifer, Tabitha, Steffi, Ashley, Dot Cosplay, Mo, Rachel, and Sharon. I really, really appreciate the support. Uh, it means so much to me, um, and I'm really excited about the content that I can create in the future and the way that I've managed to upgrade my setup. I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell, but this was filmed on new camera, and I can actually see myself, so hopefully I've been kind of in focus. And also, I have a microphone, so hopefully the audio is better. Um, I'm doing what I can to upgrade my setup and to make my videos a little bit more professional, even if I'm not getting any more professional. I also want to give a thank you to Christina. And there was someone called C. Smith on Kofi who was incredibly generous as well and told me that I should get new iron. So I'm going to look into new irons, and I really appreciate the recommendation. Thank you in general to anyone who has supported me on Patreon or any other websites. Um, even if you're just leaving a comment and a like, it really helps me out, and I really, really appreciate it. And I shall talk to all of you very soon.